be so gracious to stand to your feet and open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17. Uh, to try to respect uh, your time uh, today. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17. Verse 17. Tell me if you have it. I want you to see your Bible and get familiar with it. I'm reading out of the King James Version. Paul writing this book to his own church and to us. He says in verse 17, now in this that I declare unto you, talking to his own church, but I cannot praise you for when you come together, you don't come together for the better, but you come together for the worst. This is his own church. First of all, when you have come together in this church, I hear that there are a lot of divisions amongst you. Someone shout unity. unity. Someone shout agreement. For there must also be heresies amongst you if there's divisions, which are approved and made manifest amongst you. Verse 20, and when you come together, therefore in one place, is it not to eat the Lord's Supper? For in eating, every one takes his own supper, and one is hungry and one is drunk. He said, don't you have houses to eat and to drink? Why are you despising the church of God and bringing shame to her. He says, I cannot praise you for that. Quick note in his church, they were drinking uh, the communion wine and eating the bread, unleavened bread. And, and uh, he was telling them, you're getting drunk in service and you're eating the bread. What's going on in your mind? You, sir, you, you sure you want to go back to the early church? He said in verse 23, For I have received of the Lord, I delivered unto you. Notice carefully that the Lord Jesus, that same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this, what beloved? One more time, do this what? He wants you and I to remember some things. Remember some things. After the same manner, he took the cup which he had supped, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. Do this as you often do. Drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat, it doesn't tell us how often to take communion or the Lord's Supper. He says, As often as you eat this and drink this cup, you are showing the Lord's death till he comes. Once he comes, we won't have communion anymore. Chapter 15, quickly. Verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached, Paul says, that you have received. Verse 2, Which also you are saved, notice, if you keep, King James says, in memory of what I have preached to you unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first importance, that which I received, notice, how Christ died for our sins. First importance, according to the scriptures, he was buried, rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Scene of Peter, the twelve, five hundred and such. Verse 19, I don't know what that is. Verse 19, Paul says, if only in this life you have, who's listening? If only in this life. Notice what he says, and only in this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most miserable. Did you hear that, beloved? Yes. If, this, if this life is the only place you have hope in Christ, we are most miserable. But now he has risen from the dead. Mm. He has risen from the dead, and he has become the first fruits of them that slept. And lastly, mm -hmm, lastly, Luke chapter 17. You're getting more Bible today than you had in a month. <laughs> Someone shout, feed me. Feed me. 
Luke 17, 37. And uh, Jeremy, if you'd put that on the overhead, that'd be super. Tell me if you have it. Come on, beloved. Tell me if you have it. And they answered, whole passage that you've already read. And they answered and said unto him, the disciples, where, Lord? And he said unto them, wherever the body is, your translation is going to, I'm going to clean this up for you. Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Where the body is, you might have carcass. Wherever the body is, there, not vultures, there the eagles will be gathered. Father, thank you for the beautiful collection of people that you've allowed me to stand before this morning. I am again so thankful for them and for their lives. Bless them today in Jesus' name. Amen. Someone shout hallelujah. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember Remember, keep in memory, remember, wherever the body is, the slain body of Christ, there the eagles will be gathered. There the eagles will be gathered. I want to quickly bring to you this morning a reminder that you are an eagle. I said I'm going to remind you today. That where the body is, where the slain, Revelation 5, 6, the slain body of Christ, there the eagles will be gathered. That when you take communion, I want it to be a reminder that you are an eagle this morning. You are not a chicken. Turn to someone and tell them, I am not a chicken. A farmer had, a, he had taken an egg from an eagle's nest. He placed it under a hen and it hatched. It's got a reverb. It hatched with a brood of little chickens. The farmer raised it with much patience and attempted to tame it. It never really seemed to fit in with the other chickens. Who's listening? It walked alone. <laughs> And could not seem to find proper fellowship with the other chickens. It had never known any other existence but the routine of life in the chicken yard. However, deep inside, something seemed to be wrong. It just didn't feel like home for this eagle. One day, a storm cloud began to brew and the sky became dark. And all of the barnyard animals were scurrying around for cover. They were terribly frightened. And yet the eagle stretched out its wings that the farmer had failed to clip. And as he did, his eye caught the sight of another great eagle riding the wind. His wings were outstretched in majestic form. And he was not afraid of the storm at all. The eagle that had been raised as a chicken looked at all of the other chickens in the barnyard, frantically scurrying around. This eagle heard the piercing cry of another one in the sky, and at that moment he knew he had to get out of the chicken yard. A gust of wind caught under his outstretched wings lifted him from the post he was sitting on, and with a shrill and a scream of victory and freedom, he left that barnyard forever, never to return as a caged chicken ever again. I am here to remind you that you are an eagle you are not a chicken. There are a lot of Christians that seemingly can be different types of birds. A magpie, overly aggressive and bully, abuses and drives others from God. They're pushy Christians, always talking, rarely listening, always trying to fix others when they themselves need fixed. You are an eagle. You're not a magpie. Let me have an agreement. You're not a kookaburra. To him, life is one big party. One big joke. He takes nothing seriously and laughs at everything, even when it's totally inappropriate. He's a big clown. 
not sensitive to people at all. You're an eagle. I said, you're an eagle. You're not a vulture. You're not a buzzard. This bird, Christian, enjoys the filth of life. Eats dead things that have no eternal value. This Christian bird loves to rip people apart. Tear them to pieces with his mouth. Spreads rumors. Thinks nothing of destroying a reputation or a ministry. He has the smell of death about him. Hey, you're an eagle. You're not a parrot or a cockatoo. These are the talkers of the bird kingdom. <laughs> can you manage this communion service? This is the super spiritual Christian who can talk the talk but can't walk the walk. They parrot fashion, mimicking someone else. All head knowledge, no experience, all noise and no action. You are an eagle. You're not a cuckoo bird. This bird loves to sponge off someone else. Doesn't want to build its own nest, but looks for one that's already finished by someone else. It lays its eggs there, then leaves the other bird to raise its babies. Who's listening? There are a lot of cuckoos in church today looking for handouts. They don't want to work. Sometimes they're not even born again, but operate under a religious spirit. Hey, you're an eagle. You're not a peacock. This Christian's flashy, showy bird, overambitious, full of pride, loves themselves. Look at me, I'm superior. They love strutting their stuff. You're an eagle. You're not a pelican. This is a jolly bird, only wants to eat. Thinks about its belly all of the time. Happy to sit back with a beer and a smoke and let the little lady clean the house. I said, you're an eagle. You're not a crow. Better get through my birds. You're not a sparrow or a finch. See what I did all weekend? <laughs> I don't know if it was worth the time. My God, how many birds are there? Jeez, I don't even know how to pronounce some of these. Like, what bird's that? A sparrow, they fritter from place to place, chattering away, rarely having anything worth listening to, usually in a social whirl. I said, you're an eagle. These sparrows and finches hop from church to church without ever settling down. Rarely do such birds grow in God. You're an eagle. You're not a canary. These are beautiful birds with tremendous potential. Listen. They're content, though, to spend the rest of their lives locked, locked behind the bars of a cage. Whatever that cage might be. Religious tradition. A dead church. Inferiority and insecurity. They live and die behind the bars of their cage without really having ever lived. I said, you're an eagle. I said, you're an eagle. Where the body is there, the eagles will be gathered. You are bold. You are strong. You are devoted. You know the thermal currents of God's Holy Spirit. You are a bird that has been chosen by Him. And He has great plans for you. You and I must realize that as an eagle Christian, that you are born with spots and blemishes. But as long as you don't believe the lies of the devil, he's going to remove those spots and those blushes, and you're going to glow like the eagle you are. Don't you quit. I said, don't you quit. Eagle, you are born into a nest. You're not to be living just in and of yourself. God has brought you into a nest in this house. He has brought you here to fellowship and to have communion and to get to know one another. He has brought you into a nest and seated you in heavenly places. You are an eagle and your strength comes from what you eat. Where the vulture eats dead prey, you must have living water living food for God to grow and to strengthen you. Eagle, you must 
realize that God will stir your nest up. He'll flutter over you and make your nest a little uncomfortable. Why? Because he wants you to grow. He wants you to be changed from glory to glory and strength to strength. You are an eagle. And where the body is there, the eagles will gather. Now listen carefully. As an eagle, you must understand the preening process. Because you will be flying in heavenly places. And the winds can carry grime and dirt. And eagles understand they must preen themselves. But they will take each feather and run it through its beak to cleanse itself. Otherwise, the actual wings become heavy and it can't soar in places that it's meant to go. God wants the Word of God to clean me, to wash me, so that I can be the eagle that He has called me to be. Let the Word of God clean you and to preen you. You must realize, beloved, please listen to this point, that an eagle can begin to have a season of molting. Molting this week, a marriage of a family, been in God 45 years. Who's listening? Who's listening? And there was such cynicism within their Christian life. They had gone through so much, been in church, yada, yada, yada. Oh, they did this, this happened, this did it, they did that, they didn't do this. Okay, maybe Christian, you're in the molting season. The molting season. What is that? During the stages of an eagle, if they're not careful, the beak can become heavy and weighted. As a matter of fact, some of the research I did over in North Carolina and Tennessee, a gentleman that has overseen a large habitat of eagles, wrote a wonderful article on the, on the molting of eagles. He wrote that he has buried in the last two years 27 bald eagles because the molting process of that eagle, they, the beaks became heavy and they, and they no longer could fly and they began to walk upon the earth, a platform that they were never meant to walk on. Their talons were broken. They began to bleed and began to, to actually die. And he had 27 crosses there. Because of the eagle that didn't manage the molting process. As you, Christian, go through the seasons of your life, you must be very careful that you don't become cynical. That you don't become worn out of church life. That you've heard it and you've had the prophecies and you've had the oil and you, you've had all of this. And now you're a molten eagle. And now you've been in church so long you become cynical like that marriage couple. And I said, you're like a molted eagle. You need to, like the eagles do, begin to break that off of your beak. You need to, like they would do, begin to break it off on the rock of your salvation, Jesus Christ. And begin to ask him to feed you once again so you can soar in heavenly places. May that never be your cause. May I never return to your life in 20 and 30 years. And you're no longer soaring in heavenly places. That somehow you have allowed the molting process to, to confine you to the areas of this life. Beloved, may you be an eagle and soar with him forever and ever and ever and ever. He was mentioning in that article that he saw those that were, I think he mentioned seven, that were in the molting process. And he noticed that some of the eagles that understood it and began to break the calcium off their beaks began to cry for those that were still dormant on the ground. They actually began to drop pieces of living uh, fish and food to try to encourage them to eat again. And he mentioned two of these, of the seven, began to eat and began to break that off their beaks and allow the sun to begin to heal them from sicknesses and disease and began to fly again. But the others perished and he had more crosses. I wonder how many Christians that have been in the molten process of their lives give up on God. 
Give up on the house of God. Give up on this and this. And I told this couple, look, I can be cynical too, beloved. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ still is king of kings. He still is on the throne. No matter what has happened to you, no matter what has taken place to you, he is worthy of your life. Hey, I'm going to read you my poem I wrote. And then we'll have communion. I am an eagle. Say it with me. Now don't say the rest of this because you don't know the poem. <laughs> you know, you try to tell people, okay, say that, and then they try to say the poem. No, don't say that. I am an eagle. Don't say it. I am an eagle. Called to soar in heavenly places. No longer will I be confined to a chicken yard, eating and pecking pieces and traces. For God is stirring my nest, calling me higher only for his best. I will not fear the storm, for surely this cause I was born. I will use it to soar even higher. For this is his ultimate desire. For you have called me to be the king of the air. To be sure you've made me more than a conqueror, even an heir. I will take flight this day, for soon it shall surely pass away. I am an eagle. Turn to someone and tell them you are an eagle.